my lords, ladies and gentlemen, a very warm welcome to episode 15 of the Passenger Only Transport Fever 2 series. We're currently starting off in the town of Poole. Between episode 14 and 15, I did a patron only exclusive video where we renovated the station at Poole. And you can probably see the difference straight away. It's got a brand new roof. And we also have extra platform space now available to us. The reason we did this is because we'd like to start in some more local services in the northern section of the map. And to be able to accommodate all the new services, we needed the extra platform space. So the station at Poole has been expanded and upgraded. And we're now ready to start laying in some of our local lines to some of our smaller cities nearby, such as Boston and Nuneaton. So let's bring up the user interface. We are in 1979 as things stand. We have a very healthy bank account of north of £1 billion and we're making about £60 million per year. So let's zoom out and get a bit of an overview as to what we might be doing today. I think my first local service that I'm going to do is, despite doing the upgrades to pool, is actually something that doesn't include pool, which is a, a little bit contradictory. But what I'd like to do, and this is what was mentioned in a comment on a previous video as a suggestion for a branch local service, is a service that runs from Sheffield to Lowestoft to Boston. And hopefully, time permitting, we'd also go up into Nuneaton as well. So it would be point to point rather than a loop. So we'd go Sheffield into Lowestoft, Boston, Nuneaton, and then do the same journey in reverse. Now, the reason this appeals to me is, well, first of all, it's something a little bit different. We'd have to mess about with another bridge over this river somewhere. But also, we can bring into reality the idea I had about having a branch that comes this way from Sheffield through into Lowestoft. Because otherwise, we're going the long way around, passing through Carlisle to go into lower stuff. Then we're switching around in terms of direction. So we have to flip 180 at lower stuff, then head back out into Boston. Now, we could come through Carlisle and bypass Carlisle into lower stuff, then come up this way and have a branch over here somewhere in this area that comes into Boston and Nuneaton. But I think having it a little more direct is something I prefer to do and it allows me to bring this idea I had into life. So let's make a start. The first thing I'm going to do is connect Sheffield to lower stuff. So we have some signals here. So I think just after the signal is where we'll have the, the branch that breaks away to head direct to lower stuff. And what we will do is if we use a cross track first of all, we can make sure we have a nice looking overlap and everything looks tidy which it looks tidy enough. The speed here is going to be a little slow, but as it's only a branch service, a bit of lost speed isn't the end of the world. And now what we're going to do is we just curve straight back around on ourselves. So we avoid the worst of this terrain here. Head up this way, snake through here, we'll make a determination as to how we want to traverse all of this when we get there and then connect in so we can get into the station at lower stuff. So we know this signal here will have to move because if we have a train waiting at this signal, it could block the junction, which is not what we want to have happen. So let's progress. So most of this build should be relatively straightforward. I think we'd want to avoid the tunnel there, but in doing so, I think we're gonna kick out a little bit too far. Well, what would it look like if we went for the earthworks instead of the tunnel? That doesn't look too bad. As per, we can always blend off the, the worst of the terrain artifacts up and down here. And now we'll just head for this area over here. So it's wanting us to use a bridge. But again, I think we could probably do with earthworks. And along the edge, at some point, we'll just blend it all out so it doesn't look quite as obvious. So let's bring both tracks down to the same point. And this is where we need to make a decision. How do we 
traverse this hillside here or this one whichever to get over here and more importantly whereabouts in this area do we want our connection point to be now we have a set of signals here so I think having the connection point just here is the most logical option so what we'll do is again using the line that has to cross is we'll just bring a track out check what the overlap is like I think it's pretty good it's sometimes a little difficult to tell with the uh, with the blue highlighted section over the top I think no I think that's fine it's good enough and that's the main thing so that's where our junction is going to be and where are our tracks we're up here so we could snake through this or we could go for a tunnel I don't think it really matters which we go for let's just check actually what height are we at up here because that could be a determining factor so we're at about 25 meters what about down here we're down at about well we can get to 25 so we can probably avoid the tunnel and have a bit of a scenic route through here that snakes on through and save a bit of money on the tunnel construction costs the downside to doing it this way is the sharp turns that we're gonna have to have here now what we don't want is to be rising up to 39 mile an hour uh, 39 meters so we may find we have to go with a tunnel anyway mm, let's see that's 36 meters so if we do that and then bring that out to here yeah we have something of a tunnel but it's not overly long and despite concerns about the speed on these corners we still have pretty acceptable speeds down here so let's bring that all together and there we go we now have a direct connection from Sheffield to Lowestoft if we take a moment to have a look at Lowestoft we don't have any spare platforms at the moment and the issue we're gonna have here is we are very snugly nestled into the the city itself so there may not be the room for the extra platforms here we might be able to squeeze one here to bring in platform number five but then I think the issue we're gonna have is how we connect to everything else so I think lower stuff unfortunately is gonna have to live with some shared platforms it shouldn't be the end of the world but it's certainly not what what I would have hoped to have happened here but there you go okay so we'll come through lower stuff obviously stopping to pick up and drop off passengers and now we want to cross over this way because we want to head to Boston so here the issue we're gonna have is we've got to cross what is serving as our express line between Poole and Carlisle however I don't think that should be too much of an issue you're saying too much slope there well let's see how does it look that looks pretty awful doesn't it how's that that's better it is jumping up hmm, quite considerably but we are looking to have a bridge at some point anyway so it's probably not the worst idea in the world to have the track starting to climb up so that's where we'll cross over what we won't do is put any signals here or here and that's to encourage the express service to have the priority and what we may even do is remove these signals here and maybe even just push these back to maybe about to there just to make this block as long as we possibly can so the chances are the express train if two are coming at the same time the express train is likely to be in the block before the local service so the local service is the one that has to wait anyway we can worry about that later what we need to do is cross the river so if we keep our track straight now we have a nice bridge obviously we don't use or we won't be using that bridge style because it is far too slow which one should we use instead we have plenty of modern bridges to choose from or we could look at these uh, vanilla bridges for example this one 
I like this bridge because it is high speed. However, it looks something more that you'd find on on a high speed service rather than a branch service. So I think we'll go for something like this instead because the speed is still quite respectable and it just makes it look like it's been still here for about a hundred years and it's a a very old line if you know what I mean so yeah we'll go for that bridge style why not so crossing the river not a problem we're not gonna have any ships coming down here anyway so we don't need to worry about whether the waters are navigable which I believe they are regardless but it's not a concern and then we'll just allow the game to determine our track gradient here as we start to climb up towards the city of Boston. Where are we? Getting close. So if we run to about that position to begin with, leave it there for the time being, because now we want to put in our station for Boston. Now positioning here, I'm thinking we'll have it on the western side of the town. That way, when we have lines going to Poole or Warminster or up to Dunstable and so on and so forth, we're not having to cross through the town to get to a station which would be on the eastern side. So we'll stick it over here at the west. So let's make ourselves just a, a small amount of room here. And then let's get our station. We want this. I think we use green trim when it's not a mainline station, so we'll stick with that. And we'll just do the usual setup. And I think somewhere there is going to be more than acceptable. We can curve in quite nicely and it allows us to head over to Poole and so on and so forth without worrying about interrupting the city of Boston itself. Okay, so what we'll do now then is before we go any further is just get all this connected in to the rest of the town like that very simple and straightforward and I think what we'll also do here is just use the blending tool just to bring the terrain together a little bit more tidily and then we want to do our approach and departure tracks from the station so I think what we'll do is we'll first of all just bring these two tracks into platforms one and two like this and bring that one out. Has that constructed a bridge there? It has. Okay, we'll have to remove that. But we'll do that now. So I'll just quickly delete this bridge. Okay, and there we go. That's the bridge removed. And then just make sure we select Earthworks. I missed that when we did the initial connection. Whoops, make sure that is actually snapping to the track. There we go. And then what we want is when we first want to have some lines that depart Boston. So again, just run two nice straight lines out, give ourselves plenty of real estate. And we want to make sure we can get to and from every platform from either direction, north or southbound. So what we'll do is, what we've tended to do in this series, is rather than using diamonds, which are actually a lot more efficient, We'll just go for something a little bit more creative, for want of a better word. So let's do that as an initial starting point. Have a little bit of triple track there, and then merge that over like that. And I know we're not even close to connecting everything, but let's just take stock as to what we've got so far. So we have access only to platforms number two and number three as it stands. Now we could use a double slip switch there, or we could just bring out a second merge like this. Because the double slip switch is obviously quite slow when you're going over them. So now we can get onto platform four, number three and number two. The only one we don't have access to is number one. But well, that's a very simple fix. All we have to do is cross over like that. So if we're coming in from the south, we can now get onto any platform we want. If we were leaving this station and heading to the south, we can get out on platform number one on the southbound track. We cannot get out on platform two 
or platform three. We can on platform four because we have this connection here over to the southbound track. So the best solution for this, well, we could use a double slip switch there and that would solve the problems for platforms two and three. Alternatively, we could screw, oh no, that's gonna be very, very slow. So that's 27 miles an hour. I think we're best using the double slip switch for that. Pardon me. So then we can come on platform, or come away, I should say, from platforms two and three down here, make use of the double slip switch, and then we're on the southbound track and we can continue on over the bridge. So that's great. So what we need to do now is something similar. But again, we want to do a mirror repeat of what we've just done. But yeah, we want something similar for the trains heading northbound. And obviously those what are coming in from the north as well. So the initial setup will be something like that. And then what we'll do is run that out to there. Cross that over to there. Before crossing this over to here. And then once again, let's just take stock, even though we all know we're quite away from where we want to be. So if you're leaving on platform four, you can head to the north. If you're coming from platform three, you can head to the north. Platform two is already on the northbound track. Platform one has no way to get out. So what we'll do then is from this point here, put another crossover. Let's go for around about 60 miles an hour for that. There we go. So now all four platforms can head up to the north. And then if we're coming in from the north, let's just see what we can do. We can get onto platform number one, and that is it. So let's just have a think about our spacing here. Now I think we should be fine. So nice and simple, if we just do that, and if we're coming in from the north, we can get to platform one, we can get on two, and three and four. So we have full availability in our town over in Boston. Great. So what we'll do at this point is because I'd like to get this service up and running before the end of the episode, is we'll get our bus route set up for Boston first of all. And as is the standard so far, we'll start off with a very standard a very basic loop around the town. Let's get ourselves a road depot and let's pop it just there. So let's buy some vehicles. I think we'll go for the BK670 for this. And I think three of them will be enough. Now we don't have a line yet. I forgot to create the line, so let's do that now. So a new line. And we want to run main road Victoria Road, Grove Road, Grange Road, and Queen Street. Very nice. So this is the Boston Bus Loop 01. And we'll maintain the colour scheme, so we want that browny sort of not very appetising colour, which I guess is that one. Now somebody has pointed out in one of the comments that there is a mod you can get which will automatically colour your vehicles to the line that they're assigned to. I haven't investigated it yet, but it is on the list of things I want to look into. So thank you very much for pointing that out. It'll make my life much, much easier. So hopefully by the next episode, that mod will have been downloaded and we'll have it working. Anyway, that's that set up. How much time? We've got to be in about 20 minutes, so I think we can do a quick line up to Nuneaton. And I think this time we are going to have to go on the eastern side of town. And I think if we connect a road from there to there, that's a perfect location to put our train station. So let's do that. I prefer that to be straight, but it doesn't want to be. Let's try again, see if we can get a straight connection. There we go. And then we can just remove that extra bit of road there. So here's our station. We've already got the setup already in place from Boston and let's just push it a bit further to the north there we go and then what we'll do is just very quickly connect this track here through up to Nuneaton and let's see if we did 
a point to point direct connection with no intermediate steps what would it do it would do that which is uh, not very pleasant too long of a tunnel for my money so let's opt for something different ah we can't because we're climbing up quite considerably so what we might have to do is spiral upwards ever so slightly so if we go there oh we have new passenger coaches they definitely want to be checked out and we have the TGV. Very, very nice indeed. We do want to check that out. So I think what we'll do then is we'll abandon this construction for now. We'll leave the station, of course. And instead, uh, let's quickly put some signals in. And I'll not leave this footage in the episode because I think we all want to go and have a look at the new trains that we've got. So I'll just very quickly put all the signals and blocks and the rest of it in. And then use a jump cut. And we'll bring it all back once the signals are set up. So I'll see you in a few moments time. Okay then ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I've put the signals along here from Boston down to Sheffield, including at these junctions down here. So let's get this line set up and up and running, shall we? So we're coming from Sheffield. We are going to Lowestoft. And at lower stuff, let's have you on platform number three. And then you're leaving lower stuff, then you're coming to Boston. Doesn't matter what platform over at Boston. And then you're coming back and you're calling once again in lower stuff. Can you want a different platform there? Yeah. Let's have you on. Oh, you've stopped over to that platform. Does it really matter? And then lower stuff back to Sheffield. So because we're not going to be able to fit all the town names in once this line is fully up and running we'll just go for the Sheffield SH Lower Stoft Boston B to Nuneaton N Branch okay so now let's go and purchase ourselves a train and that gives us the ready made excuse to look at these new passenger wagons that we have just unlocked for ourselves so we've gone from the 2 to the 4, and as we can see, only a slightly improvement on capacity, but a vast improvement on the old speed front, and not too much in terms of extra cost per year either. So we may as well deploy, in fact, for a branch service. Now let's stick to the 87s, and uh, let's start with three of those, and then for the low cost, we're not going to look at the TGV for this service. Uh, let's use... Maybe the BR218, that's got a good rating. And I think we'll start off with two of those for just just under 25 million. So let's purchase them. And then we want to head up here so we can see the service on our screen and set them on their way. Now, the main line, because obviously if we're gonna use the TGV, it's going on the main line. So let's have a look here. So here are our mainline trains. We have the Camping Gagey, the Isaiah Ramos, and the Kylie Brooks, all named after patrons. And then we have the Dickens, the Wellington, and the Prince of Wales. Let's manage these vehicles. And let's do a comparison between Charles Dickens and the Duke of Wellington. And let's see what the improvement, if it is an improvement, is going to be. So this is just an aesthetic choice here. You have the Atlantic design or this bog standard orange colour. So let's have a look. So you're obviously a lot faster, 186 miles an hour, much higher capacity, 7 million per year, which is, yeah, quite considerably more expensive than the Intercity 125s. Your acceleration is not the best, but then again, it wasn't the best. In fact, let me have a look at that. Well, it says 4 minutes and 4 minutes, 9 minutes and 10 minutes, so it is better. And we will smash the speed that we're currently being able to achieve with the Intercity 125s. So I think we are going to make that swap out. We are going to manage all of these and, in a bulk swap out, go for the TGV. Now, which one do we want to use? Do we want the Atlantic or do we want the Standard? I quite like the blue coloration. So I think we're going to go with that. 
So the total cost for this upgrade is well over a quarter of a million, but I think it's something I'm happy to pay for. We'd still be just in and around a billion pounds, so it's not the end of the world. So let's go ahead, let's make that commitment and let's get out of the TGV. There we go. So please tell me we have one at one of our end stations. Let's just leave in Camping Gagey. So this is the train we're going to ride on today. And it's going to be a long cab ride. But I think we will go all the way to at least lower stuff, potentially pool. And I'm, I don't know, I might even just go to Wigan. And if you want to watch the whole journey, obviously you're more than welcome to. If you just want to watch it for a couple of minutes to experience the TGV, then obviously that's entirely your choice. But yeah, in fact, I will leave it all the way up to Wigan. So those of you who want to experience the full journey on the TGV, you're more than welcome to. So let's pause the date speed. Let's get on board the camping gagey. In fact, before we do, let's just turn around and have a a look at this train because it's a very iconic train of course I'm not sure if the TGV is still in use in France so if they have a, a more modern variant at this point in time but yeah obviously very famous in France and in Europe and I dare say worldwide so let's start our journey and we'll keep an eye on that speedometer in the bottom right corner so thank you very much for watching the episode I hope you've enjoyed it as always, a very special shout out to my Patreon supporters, Camping Gagey, Kylie Brooks and Isaiah Ramos, whose generosity and support is deeply appreciated. Thank you very much indeed. For now though, ladies and gentlemen, all that remains for me to say is as always, take very good care of yourselves. It's Tata for now. <laughs>